Shocking. The comeback and breakthrough of lithography machines. Why is a lithography machine 10 times more complex than a Boeing aircraft? Why can't China manufacture a lithography machine even with public blueprints? Hey friends, today we're not talking about anything else, just some hardcore stories that will make your spine tingle and your blood boil. Can you believe it? A single lithography machine contains more than 10 times the number of parts of a Boeing aircraft. And the precision requirements? It's like firing a laser from the moon and hitting a coin on Earth. This isn't just a machine, it's the ultimate crown of human industry. ASML's president once made a wildly arrogant statement, even if the blueprints were made public, China couldn't manufacture a lithography machine. Why? Because a lithography machine isn't just a single device, it's the product of global industrial collaboration. German precision manufacturing, American light source technology, Japanese material processes, and even bearings from around the world over 100,000 components are needed to piece together this technological behemoth. Those in the West thought they had us figured out, believing China lacked full industrial chain capabilities. But they overlooked the most formidable thing about the Chinese people, our extreme pressure-resistant system. So today, we're going to fully uncover this epic reverse tech drama. Next, I'll take you on a deep dive into how we're tearing Western technological blockades to shreds, step by step. Blockade and counterattack, the darkest hour under the Wassenaar Arrangement Remember the Wassenaar Arrangement signed by Europe and the US in 1996? It was like a tightening spell cast on Chinese technology. They imposed the N2 principle, essentially decreeing, China can only use chips two generations behind Western technology. Want the latest tech? impossible their aim was to lock us at the bottom of the global chip industry chain forever dependent on the west this wasn't just an agreement it was barefaced technological hegemony for two decades asml dominated the market selling each euv lithography machine for over 1 billion dollars producing a mere 55 units annually with maintenance costs hitting 30 million dollars and all subject to u.s approval Behind this lay staggering arrogance and suppression, ASML's lifeline, extreme ultraviolet EUV, light source technology, was 100% controlled by the US-based company Symer. With a single nod from Washington, ASML would cut off supplies to China. This is the brutal core of the semiconductor war. Whoever controls lithography machines controls the global tech lifeline. Analysis of the Wassenaar Arrangement and N2 Principle are classic examples of Western nations maintaining technological dominance by restricting China's progress. Ostensibly aimed at preventing weaponized technology proliferation, these measures functioned as tools to suppress scientific advancement in developing nations. ASML's monopoly on EUV lithography and US control over core light source technology highlight the unequal power dynamics in the global semiconductor industry. This technological stranglehold not only inflated product and maintenance costs but also left technologically dependent nations vulnerable to sanctions. Such neck-choking tactics, while effective short-term, often ignite powerful resilience and indigenous R&D resolve in blocked nations, just as seen in China's aerospace and high-speed rail sectors. External pressure invariably accelerates internal innovation and breakthroughs. Desperate counterattack, China's lifetime devotion to one mission initiative as sanctions tightened. China's tech sector did not yield. The Chinese Academy of Sciences CAS, launched the lifetime devotion to one mission initiative. Shanghai Microelectronics SME, unveiled a 28 nanometers lithography machine, and Shenzhen Zincalai's team directly challenged ASML. This was never just about building a machine, it was about forging the Chinese people's backbone. After 30 years of relentless effort, by 2025, China's innovative breakthroughs began to bear fruit. Harbin Institute of Technology HIT, made a stunning breakthrough in EUV light sources with its laser-induced discharge plasma LDP, technology, directly competing with ASML's laser-produced plasma LPP, approach. ASML's LPP requires high-energy lasers to bombard liquid tin, a power-hungry money pit. In contrast, China's solution uses rare gas clouds between two electrodes, creating plasma via high-voltage discharge. It is 40% smaller, 70% more energy efficient, and one-third the cost. A total game-changer. Analysis, the CAS Lifetime Devotion Initiative and the efforts of SME slash Syncoli mark China's shift from passive acceptance to active innovation in semiconductors. 
This coordination between state institutions and private enterprises reflects China's institutional advantage of pooling national resources for major projects. Hits LDP breakthrough, with its decisive edge in size, energy consumption, and cost, is a textbook example of overtaking on a curve. It not only proves China's prowess in basic scientific research but also signals the feasibility of breaking Western monopolies in critical technologies. This innovation transcends mere engineering, it represents a new development paradigm, offering the world a lesson, when faced with technological barriers, seek disruptive solutions rather than incremental imitation. Talent mobilization, the tech daredevil squad who gave up million-dollar salaries even more striking, HIT's team has an average age of just 31. This signifies a generation of young, fiery Chinese scientists, some who abandon million-dollar overseas salaries to return home, others who spend 72 hours straight in labs wrapped in military issue coats. They understand that only through breakthroughs can Western technological hegemony be shattered. Meanwhile, the Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics, CIOM, revolutionized the all-solid-state light source field. When China announced its breakthrough in this technology, ASML was dethroned as the sole global supplier. Traditional EUV lithography relies on CO2 laser light sources with a pitifully low 0% energy conversion efficiency. Our solid-state laser technology? 50% lower power consumption, yet a 3.42% conversion efficiency, a qualitative leap. As netizens quip, ASML's playbook is being torn up and rewritten by Chinese researchers. Analysis, the rise of young research teams and their sacrificial dedication is the most inspiring chapter of these breakthroughs. Foregoing overseas comforts and enduring sleepless lab marathons embody Chinese scientists' patriotic resolve to overcome blockades. This is as much a spiritual triumph as a technical one. Siam's all-solid-state light source breakthrough further cements China's self-sufficiency in EUV technology, dismantling ASML's technological monopoly. These multi-front innovations, which surpass Western benchmarks while slashing costs and boosting efficiency, herald a reconfiguration of the lithography industry's global landscape. Market reshaping, the dimension-reducing strike of 28 nanometers when SME announced mass production of its 28 nanometers lithography machine, the West was rendered speechless. Skeptics may dismiss 28 nanometers as not cutting edge, but consider this, 28 nm accounts for 83% of the global chip market. Even more critical, 70% of this machine's key components are domestically sourced, at just one-third the cost of ASML's equivalents. The journey from blueprints to production lines, and now, lithography machine dominance, was no fluke. HIT, CIOM, Tsinghua University, and others form a formidable tech assault coalition, with post-90s researchers leading the charge. From materials science to equipment design to manufacturing, China is constructing a fully autonomous industrial ecosystem. This is a 1.4 billion person tech long march, a battle we cannot afford to lose. While the West obsesses over Moore's law, China embraced saturation innovation, state funding, corporate tenacity, and academic rigor. As netizens summarize, asterisk every technology they block, we develop an entire parallel ecosystem. Asterisk we eagerly anticipate the global semiconductor realignment of 2026. Analysis SME's 28 nanometers lithography machine, with its high domestication rate and competitive pricing, represents the most commercially disruptive achievement in this tech reversal. Though not state-of-the-art, its dominance in the workhorse chip market means China will no longer bow to Western suppliers for mainstream semiconductor needs. This is a strategic masterstroke, securing the large volume mid-tier market first to accumulate expertise and scale. Collaboration between Chinese universities slash research institutes and the rise of post-90s talent demonstrate a vibrant tech talent pipeline. The saturation innovation model, which marshals national and private resources, enables rapid breakthroughs in bottleneck technologies. This portends a multipolar global semiconductor market, where Western pricing power and market share will face existential challenges. Hashtag 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 5. A promising future, technology blockades can't choke China when China's domestic EUV lithography machine debuts at a price of $120 million, a fraction of ASML's cost, and made in China becomes synonymous with high-quality and affordable, Western technological hegemony will be exposed as fragile. History rhymes, whether in high-speed rail, tunnel boring machines, or space stations, the tighter the Western blockade, the stronger China's counterattack. The cycle of blockade breakthrough counter-dominance is repeating with lithography. 
Why? Because technology blockades can never shackle the Chinese people, they only forge a more ferocious innovation inferno. Next time the West threatens sanctions, we will simply smile and press onward. The lithography machine saga is but a prologue, China's manufacturing odyssey is boundless. Analysis, by invoking China's triumphs in high-speed rail, tunnel boring, and space, this section reinforces the blockade breaker narrative, illustrating China's adaptive resilience under pressure. A future low-cost domestic EUV lithography machine would not merely disrupt the semiconductor industry, it would redraw global economic and geopolitical fault lines. This is more than a technical feat, it is a declaration that technological monopolies are transient, and that market-driven innovation will always carve new pathways. When China's quality meets affordability ethos penetrates high-tech sectors, it will trigger a global industrial reckoning, forcing a radical rebalance of power and innovation. Let's raise a toast to Chinese tech. Share your thoughts below. Where do you foresee China's next great technological leap?